One of the most unusual events in the life of the State Services Commission came to a costly conclusion today, although the exact cost is unknown. What is known is that the new State Services Commissioner, Peter Hughes, has apologised to two former senior diplomats, Nigel Fife and Derek Leesk, for what was called the Rebstock investigation and the SSC's handling of it. It sounds like the inner machinations of the most remote corners of the Wellington Civil Service, but it's bigger than that. The Rebstock report for the State Services Commission looked at leaked MFAT documents and where they had come from. I quote now from former Ombudsman Ron Patterson, who was highly criti critical of the Rebstock report. Publication of a flawed report caused significant damage to Mr Leesk's reputation and resulted in serious, unwarranted and adverse professional, personal and financial consequences for him. Now, the new commissioner has offered a public apology and the two men will be paid costs and compensation. So, how did Paula Rebstock and the previous commissioner get this so wrong? Paula Rebstock declined an interview, as she did after the Ombudsman's report came out. So I asked Derek Leask himself. I simply don't have an answer to that, uh, John, and uh, I've often pondered that, but I don't have an answer and I don't want to start speculating. Uh, what I'm uh, focusing on right now is the fact that we have had uh, a, a new look at this by the new State Services Commissioner. He has uh, recognised what the Ombudsman uh, said and he has accepted that. He's accepted the findings and the recommendations and those have been implemented so that uh, the, the proper thing has now been done and I must say I'm uh, very pleased about that. The proper thing has now been done twice because you have received complete exoneration from the Ombudsman in the first instance and then today from the State Services Commissioner. Mm. And so that tells us that in fact Paula Rebstock and Ian Rennie were spectacularly wrong. I simply do not know what the range of forces were uh, or the range of abilities were that produced this spectacularly, as you call it, wrong uh, result. But the Ombudsman investigated all of that and he came out very clearly in my favour. I felt thoroughly vindicated uh, just in, in June this year. And mm. so uh, today is really about something a bit different from that. And that is that now, the, instead of thumbing their nose at the Ombudsman, which is what uh, happened in June, the State Services Commission is in effect apologising for the Rebstock investigation and for the State, Sec State Services Commission um, administration and management of that. Yes, you say the State Services Commission thumbed their nose at the Ombudsman's report. Of course, the State Services Commission is under new management now. That's material, isn't it? I mean, that's why you've got this explicit apology and payment. Well, uh, one has to uh, assume that, uh, that the initial response that was given by the State Services Commission in June would have meant that uh, left under that leadership that we would not have had the appropriate response that we've had today. And I'm sorry to interrupt, but that is precisely the opposite of what the State Services Commission exists to do. I mean, the State Services Condi uh, Commission cannot be subjective. It cannot hold grudges. It cannot be personal. And yet the very clear inference of all of this is that under the old leadership, you were kind of doomed. Justice was going to be denied. It took a change of leadership for you to get what was coming to you. Yes, uh, I don't know just quite what, would have, what avenues would have been pursued under the old regime, but the good thing is that I don't have to speculate about that. We got, uh, we, we got the uh, sort of responses out of the State Services Commission which are appropriate, so that's good. <laughs> very good, and according to the Ombudsman, very due and very fair and very reasonable. I know the settlement is confidential. Can you talk about it in any way, shape or form? Uh, I certainly uh, am not able to uh, not able to talk about the financial settlement that is confidential and uh, and personal, and uh, uh, I won't be talking about that. But of course, uh, Peter Hughes, the State Services Commissioner, has uh, given uh, a press conference today, and he. Uh, gave some considerable details of what's in that settlement. The, the apology was very much part of that settlement and that's what we, we had today, is an unreserved uh, apology. Uh, we also have had there today the uh, formal withdrawal of all of the criticisms made in the, in the Rebstock report against Nigel Fife and me. A withdrawal is a hugely important thing. 
In your yes. opinion, and, and I, I, I'm sensing such a profound decency and courtesy about you that I, I fear you're not going to answer this question, but you know, God loves a trier. Should Paula Rebstock ever be asked to do this kind of work for the government again? Uh, I'm not going to answer that uh, <laughs> other, than to, other than to say that uh, I do not believe she was a good fit for this particular job. Derek Lees, we would love to have Paula Rebstock on the program. We keep saying that uh, for balance and to find out what was going on here and we can't get her to appear.